Hi guys, my name's Barry and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a review for Abigail, the new vampire flick from Radio Silence. This is going to be a spoiler review, guys. So if you haven't seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, then please don't watch this review. However, if you don't mind spoilers or if you have seen the movie, then continue watching. A group of people kidnap a little girl so that they can get a share of $50 million, but they find out that she is no ordinary girl. She is a vampire. We kidnapped a fucking vampire. The gang have to try and survive the night and try and find a way to get away from Abigail, or worse, her father. One thing I really liked about this film was we already knew that Abigail was a vampire thanks to the trailer, but the cast, the characters don't know that she's a vampire. So I like the fact that they waited to almost almost halfway through the movie until they find out that she is a vampire. So during the first half of the film, we get to find out the backstories of all the characters. Thanks to Joey in the movie, who's played by Melissa Barrera. She identifies all the backstories because she knows absolutely everything. It's quite a cringy moment, but I think it was quite necessary to build up the characters so that we can get to know the characters before they find out that Abigail is a vampire. The gang start getting picked off one by one until Abigail reveals herself to be the vampire. Now, I love movie trailers a I love doing trailer reactions from time to time and I just love watching movie trailers but unfortunately for Abigail I think we got almost the entire movie in the trailer apart from the end of the film and even the end of the film was very predictable from what we saw in the trailer anyway so we've got Lambert in this film who was the leader he was the one that got all the gang together to go into this place into this house and kidnap Abigail and take her to another house and straight from the trailer I just said to myself this Lambert guy seems like a guy who's orchestrated all this and caused the problems and it turns out that yes Lambert was not the fool not fully responsible, but he was turned a few years ago by Abigail's father and he was tasked to round people up. So he they got people who were semi-involved in some issues that Abigail's dad had in the outside world. So they collected all these people and got them into this house so that Abigail can just play around with them before she killed them. We've got Frank, played by Dan Stevens, who he was like the leader of the people who were tasked to kidnap Abigail and I didn't I didn't see this part coming where Lambert turned Frank into a vampire so that he could then help him take out Abigail and her dad but in doing so Frank being the person that he is he decided no nope, I'm not going to be doing that I'm going to kill Lambert and then I'm going to kill Abigail I thought with the character that Frank was that he would actually help Joey escape so that he can escape as well and then he can start taking over on the outside world however he got the power he let the power get to him and he eventually failed what he tried to do was he tried to turn Joey into his puppet, just like we saw that happened earlier on in the film when Abigail turned Sam into her puppet. What she done was she bit her, but she didn't give her her blood, so she didn't fully turn into a vampire. All she could do was mimic that what Abigail was doing. So Frank tried to do the same with Joey after he was turned into a vampire, so he bit Joey and he couldn't control her. Instead, the tables turned and Joey and Abigail worked together so that they could kill Frank. Abigail and Joey successfully killed Frank so it was just Joey that was left out of the humans. Abigail decided to let her go but Abigail's father turned up at the very end after everybody died and with Abigail she did say to her dad that Joey helped her when he was an absent father and Joey as a as a mother herself and she was an absent mother but she wants to survive so that she can get back to her son so Abigail made her dad um, let her go because she wants her dad to be there for her just like Joey wanted to be there for her son. He obviously accepts and then Joey survives. How do I say this without upsetting a certain group of people? But I'll say it anyway, I think that Melissa Barrera's character, Joey, was the weakest character in the film. I think they gave us a big backstory for her that she had a son, she was a junkie and she was a recovering addict, but they gave her too much with the capabilities that she has as an actress. I think Melissa Ber Barrera is a good actress, but she was kind of out of her depth with the information she was given for this character. And I don't think it really worked for her. She was the most boring character in the film. And the reason for that is because this film relied heavily on a lot of comedy. It was kind of serious at times, but relied on a lot of comedy. And everybody gave their comedy moments um, 
There was a lot of comic relief in the film, but none of it came from Joey, Melissa Barrera. So it felt like she was in the wrong film. She was out of place in the movie. She'd done a fine job. She was okay. But everybody else was a lot better than her because they delivered what was supposed to be a comedy horror instead of a serious horror. Dan Stevens was my favourite. I think even before he was turned into a vampire near the end, he, his comic relief was funny. I think he was serious when he wanted to be. So I think he'd done what Melissa Barrera should have done. He should have given us, she should have given us the serious moments, something that he gave us, and she should have given us, she should have given us comedy moments, something that he could also deliver. So when it comes to all the other characters, I didn't get behind them all. I think Ang Angus Clouds, rest in peace, of course. I don't think he was that good either. I think he was like Chan and Tatum. He just had no charisma. Maybe that's what they were going for with his character, but I didn't really like him either. I think the, the best ones and the standouts were obviously Catherine Newton, Kevin Durand and Dan Stevens. And also, a big shout out to the girl that played Abigail. She was absolutely fantastic. And speaking of comedy, the film at times felt like it should have been dark, but it never ventures into the dark, dark, so that you weren't ever scared. I'm not scared anyway of horror films, but anyone who watches horror films, sometimes they want to go into it to feel scared, but you never get that sense throughout the film because anytime there's a serious moment happening or there's something that you think is going to build up to be a dark moment, it ends with some comic relief. So I think that's probably what the filmmakers were going for, a bit of comic relief so you weren't too scared, but they should have upped the ante on that part. They should have given us some scary moments. There were some comedy moments that really worked, but there was just no scary moments at all. The look of the film was obviously beautiful as well. They set it in this big mansion. It obviously felt like ready or not, and that's exactly what it was like. Obviously, it's from Radio Silence as well, so you got that sense of ready or not in the film all the way through it. In the UK, this was an 18-rated film. It didn't feel like an 18 rated movie. When we have a film that's rated 15 in the UK, sometimes it's rated R in the US, sometimes it's PG-13. But here in the UK, it's quite hard to get an 18 rated film. Now, yes, there was a lot of blood, guts and gore, but you see that in a lot of eight, uh, 15 rated films in the UK. So I didn't quite understand the reason why it was given an 18 rating here in the UK. The only thing I can think of was because the film had a little girl in it and she'd done a lot of things in it that maybe viewers would find disturbing. I don't know, but it's very hard to get an 18 rated one and this one shouldn't have been an 18. At the end of the day, guys, it's a very, very easy watch. Now, it was very pleasing on the eye. It was a very good film, very well-made movie. I only had a couple of issues with it and the issues were it didn't get as serious as I wanted it to be. It, it relied on a lot of comedy and the other issue was it was just very predictable. We got most of the film in the trailer and then the things that we didn't get we could piece it together before the end of the film anyway. So it was a very predictable movie. I think if you showed us a trailer for the film without seeing Abigail being a vampire, then I think that would be a good twist. Maybe let the audience know that there's vampires in the movie, but don't tell us that Abigail's a vampire. Something like that, I don't know. But I think we were just fed everything in the trailer and that ruined the experience for me. It didn't ruin the film, it just ruined the experience. But still, I know we're only in April, it was probably still one of the best horror films of 2024 so far. So what are your thoughts on Abigail, guys, if you've seen the movie? Leave your comments down below, let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you soon. Meeting adjourned. To get you, Barbara. Ever played skin the cat? Someone's in the back. See? Tell me where you are, John. Wolfman's gone.